go, sorry. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you very much, Pete, for the introduction. Good morning to everybody. I'm very happy to be here. And I have the chance to show you a couple of details about the AI Spectrum game that I guess uh, can be played also from the PCs over there. Yeah, we have it also to play on these PCs. Exactly. Yeah. So in case you want to play later on, there's also my colleague Antonio there who can well support you and, and give you some, some practical information in case you need them. So I will go very quickly through a couple of details and then we'll go together through a video that shows how the game is, is running and um, how the game looks like. And I will comment on this video. So very briefly, <clears throat> we have three scenarios that can be played in the game. Um, the idea is that you can work in an office, so do some um, office work. Uh, you could work in a small supermarket or also in a commercial garden center. So it's, it's three working, different working situations that have the same structure, actually. Each of those is uh, divided in six phases. So um, at, at the very beginning, you have an avatar selection, so you might decide how you look like in, when you play the game. Um, you have a short um, interview to get introduced into the job. It's a placement uh, office. Uh, well, yeah, just, just, just to start from the very beginning, just not to jump into the work, but just to go through the normal phases that one um, is, is facing when, when it's uh, coming to a real job. Um, then you have a short interview with your new employer. And then you have the real working phases. So the very first day at work, and then a bit the phases where you're more, um, more, more, well, proficient, where you're getting into the, the routine of the work, like one month after you started and three months after you started. Um, couple of technical specifications. The game is actually uh, able to run on any modern browser, so the latest versions. Um, you don't need anything specific, you just need a Flash plugin, which is something that you can download for free in, in a given website. And uh, you need an internet connection because it's an online game. Um, what, what we put together here is actually three different interaction modalities. One is a so-called branching story. You have to imagine there's a sort of narrative written in form of a tree which means that each time you make a decision, then the story evolves according to one branch or the other. So if you make a different decision, you must expect that something different happens, like in real life. For example, if you say yes or no, probably uh, the other person you're talking to will have a different reaction or will reply with something different. So that's quite realistic. Uh, then you can navigate into uh, 3D spaces. And we have what we call mini games. Mini games for us are normally uh, very focused training um, portions, training bricks. So the idea is that with one mini game, you train or you understand or you're introduced really to one very small focused topic. And uh, I will show you some of these later in the video. One of the peculiarities of this game is that you have a body there. So the idea is peer-to-peer -peer learning, which means that you have a sort of colleague, a colleague who is more introduced into the company, who knows more than you do, who takes you uh, through the whole um, introduction and through the whole work. So it's a sort of friend uh, who is on the same side as you are. So it's not like, like a trainer or like a coach who is um, supporting you from up above. So it's not top down, but it's on your same level. And you get any support you might want. So it's somebody you can always ask a, a question or from uh, whom you can get some support. And, and this body is uh, one of the features that the user has um, at his or her disposal while playing the game. Um, there's also, we heard also Mary this morning talking about feedback. There's of course also feedback system it's um, in form of scores. It's, uh, we will see it in the video. It's a little box that looks like this one that can be um, visualized all the time, but that can also be switched off. So each time you feel you would like to have some feedback just to see a bit, am I doing what well or, or not too well, then you can uh, visualize it. But if you feel you would better find out in, at the end, for example, or later on, then you can make it disappear. Um, and of course, we've heard about a uh, purpose and an objective that um, that we are having, a very serious objective that we are having because, and, and that is representing the reason why we're playing. Uh, and this is also uh, here the case, of course, it's the skills that we're training with this game. And um, we, are, we are looking at, I would say, two different groups of skills. One is 
tasks that I can perform, like I, I learn how to write emails or how to deal with different, for example, um, concrete uh, tasks in the office, for example. But the other one is more on the on the social level and on the emotional level. Like when am I supposed to shake hands or or how should I interact with people? So it's it's actually a bit uh, two different sides of, of skills that we're training here. And without spending further words on this, I would prefer to show you now the video and we go through the phases of the game. So let's see, because this is the beauty of technology online, if we can make this work. Uh -huh. Okay, so this is the starting page. You just need to click on play. And the first thing you get is a bit of instruction. So you're really introduced also into how to play the game. So there's, there's every phase explained to you before you start, so that there should be nothing that is afterwards coming up as a surprise in the game. The, the whole um, functionalities are explained, the whole interface is explained. This is the interface. In the middle, maybe I can, no. Uh, there is the, the real game and around it you have all the functionalities that you will need bit by bit through the game. So um, I said we have the phase of the placement office, for example. So here you have, you're having your placement interview with this lady. And uh, this lady is offering you actually three choices. So if you would like to work in the office, in the uh, gardening center or in the supermarket. Here you make your choice and after this you can play one or the other of the three choices. After you decided where to, um, where to work, you have this interview with the boss. So this is the same in all the three environments. And um, you have always your body. It's uh, the guy with the green, um, how do you call it, the sleeveless pullover? Waistcoat, thank you, sorry. <laughs> um, and he's always supporting you. So the, the first interview with the boss is something a bit more difficult, so the body is there to support you. You see some phases of what I called before branching stories. So you, you receive the situation, that somebody tells you something in the box up there, and in these three bars, you can make your choice. And according to your choice, you just need to click on the bar to decide what you reply. You will get um, a, a second step or a third step uh, through the narration. This is the 3D navigation. You have arrows that tell you which direction you can go to. And then you have some options, for example, a door, the door of the meeting room in this case. You can decide if you want to enter the meeting room clicking on the door or if you don't. If you don't want to, you can go somewhere else. You saw a map before of the office so that you always know where you are and where you could go. You see that in this other button, the, the figures are, the, 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 the avatars are displayed of the story so you can find out who is doing what in the office. You have a notebook with the tasks that you have for that day and you have always the body, this little face down there, uh, who has always a very good word for you and some advice. So this is, for example, the action to enter the meeting room. <clears throat> um, for those who are um, aware of 3D games, normally in a 3D game, you move your avatar with the arrows on the keyboard. To make it more simple, we skip this phase. So once, for example, you click on the door of the meeting room, you will see a very small video of the avatar moving into the room. So once you decide to enter the room, it's your avatar doing it for you. This is an example of a mini game, for example. You have to log into a PC, so it uh, shows, or actually it's you, the user, who has to put in your um, username and your password, you, you get your emails. And this task is about writing emails. So probably on your notebook before, you found out that you have to check your email and you have to reply to the messages that you have there. So this is really about setting together an email. So after you did this mini game, you should be able to write an email or to reply to an email. You get immediately a feedback by the body. In this case, the email was correct or was correctly set up. Um, if not, the body tells you what was wrong and you have the chance to try again and reply to your email. So then, for example, you have to print some copies of a document 
and you do that as well. So these mini games are really unit portions of training. So this now is something from, coming from the commercial garden. You have to get dressed to do your job. So now your avatar is looking correctly equipped to do the job. Again, you have some dialogue in form of a branching story. In this case, you had two choices instead of three. It can be from two to four. And here you have a mini game about um, setting together some boxes of flowers. So uh, you have a list of what kind of flowers uh, you have to put in the box, like, I don't know, three roses and, and four um, whatever other flowers. And you have to pick them from the, from the um, from the whole bunch that you have at your disposal and put the correct amount of the correct flowers into the box. So now this is a scene from the supermarket. Again, some dialogues here. So now we are ready, we go to the warehouse and here we have uh, to take some, some products from the shelves and put them in the correct place in the, in the warehouse. So we have to choose the correct ones, put them on a sort of, of, um, yeah, well, of, of, of trolley or something to carry them to the warehouse and then put them in the right, on the right shelves. So we collected the correct items and now we have to put them in the right places on, on the shelf there. Some things go in the fridge. There we were wrong, so we put the item in the wrong place and we get immediately feedback and we have to try again and put it in, in, on the correct shelf. According to how, much, how many times I did the right choice or the wrong choice, the scores change, of course. In the end, we get an overall feedback about how well we performed. So this gives you a bit the idea of the look and feel of the game. So with this, what I personally call fake 3D, fake because I move the avatars in another way which is a bit unconventional with these videos. It gives you the idea of the interaction, these three ways, with the branching stories, with the mini games, and um, with, with this navigation of the spaces, and it gives you the idea of the functionalities. So you have the buddy uh, tutoring you all the time you need him, and plus giving fee providing feedback bit by bit through the action. Uh, the map of the environment, your notebook with what you have to do, uh, the scoring system, and this bar with the levels. It's, uh, I didn't comment on that before. Um, up there, you probably noticed you have from zero to the sixth level. It's the levels that I described in my presentation before. So the, the choice of the avatar, the interview, um, the, the steps your first day into, in, in the office or uh, at your working place uh, after one month, after three months. So, so you always know where you are and actually how many phases you have uh, before you finish the game. So actually this is what I wanted to show you and if you have questions, we will try to do our best to answer. Yes, please. Uh, no, in this moment there's not. It can be added though. In my setting I would need that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you mean for doing language training as well? It could be as well, yeah. Uh, it was not the idea with, uh, with which it was created, but obviously the game we have in four languages already. It's in, um, in English, in German, in Italian and in Bulgarian. Yes, you can, because if you give tasks in a language and the other one can perform them, so he probably understood what you were asking. And it's a very practical way of learning a language, but it, it can be used for that purpose as well. Okay, you're welcome. Any other question or curiosity? Yes. Just hold on one second, just get the question. Okay. Are you going to make the game in Spanish? If there's the need, why not? <laughs> We actually had an offer um, in uh, Danish. Or, or, we or should I answer por que no? <laughs> in Danish you want it. Yeah, we had, a, we had a lady already offered to, to produce the game into Danish actually a few months ago. So <laughs> if the need's there, 
let me just say the technology is able to uh, contain any language. It's just a matter of having the translations. So if we have the translations, we can easily create new versions. Yes, please. Um, just thinking about the future of it, would it be possible at some point um, to develop something where um, people could customize it? So instead of like these three workplace settings, um, somebody working with an individual with autism could maybe do it, set it up so it's a school and program in their own options, like their own flowchart? <clears throat> um, in a certain way, yes. That's a bit what we're doing in the company also with other things. Yeah. Um, it still has to be quite guided because um, what we're setting up now is a sort of what I could call wizard tool so that um, you are able to put your own pictures and your own well, narratives or, or, or wording in, into the game, but still then you have like a bit of templates of, of things that can happen. Yeah. So. With that respect, yes, of course, you can. You have also then to um, provide feedback and so on, and that should also be there. So um, once we, we have this template wizard tool and uh, we explain to people how to deal with that, yes. When do you think that will be ready? Um, probably less than one year. Oh, that's brilliant. Yes, because we were already working on that, so I know um, what I'm talking about. I've got one more, which is just, I'm just interested in yeah. what you think. Um, obviously, one of the issues with autism is predictability. Okay. And this, as it's a computer game, it's very predictable. If X, then Y. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, real life and real employment situations aren't like that. Have you thought about sort of programming in any interesting activities, interesting things that happen? L that let me start the answer by saying that I'm not absolutely an expert. Yeah. So how this situation should be is, is up to you all probably. Um, in, in technical terms, yes, because we can um, put random functionalities in there. For example, a phone ringing, or suddenly a door bangs close, or somebody pops into the room asking for something you didn't expect, and so on. And then ca that can be done on a random, um, with random functionalities. So once you play, I don't know, the phone rings, and the next time to play, in the same moment, the phone does not ring, but I don't know, um, somebody pops into the room. So different things happen in, while you play the same situation. Okay. So that's probably what you're looking for. Yes. Yeah, um, I was just going to ask um, about the time portion of it in the sense that actually one of the problems that a lot of people with autism have in employment is not so much doing the task, it's being given a set amount of time and actually mm -hmm. feeling pressured by that. Again, I wasn't here from the start of the presentation, so you may have mentioned it, but is, is there going to be or is there a possibility of having some sort of time element, which I know you might think, well, it's putting pressure on, but actually it is simulating what it's often like for autistic people in work, which is you've got this and maybe you've only got three minutes to, to work it out. And actually part of that is understanding how to prioritise when you've only got a limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, there's no time in here, Antonio. Okay. Um, we can do that. We, ha we have another game... Um, with, with a virtual hospital, for example, which is taking the time you're, you're using, one, one idea could be to make it to different levels. For example, if, um, if you're maybe new to the game or, or new to work or, or whatever, if you need a lower level, you could use it without time. And then in a more advanced level, you could introduce the timing, maybe of the same things as well. Yes. Yeah, as I say, one of the important things we had to do, obviously, throughout was to try and make it applicable to as many people as possible. So one of the things Lucia mentioned was about the scoring. And the scoring, actually, you can open it or close it, depending on whether you want it, because some people said that actually the scoring would be a little bit too much pressure. Other people said, actually, I quite like the challenge of trying to score. Yeah. And then we never know, should it be there or shouldn't it be yeah. there? So then we leave it up to the player to decide, or to somebody um, like a tutor with the player to decide if the scoring should be there or not. But yeah, we, these tricks we can do. Maybe the last question? Please, do you want to get this question back for us, Olga? Thank you. <laughs> um, it's just, uh, so with regard to the scoring, uh, the people I support, uh, the difficulty they have is reading other people's emotions. So how, uh, without playing the game yet, could the scoring be adapted so that they can see how their responses are making the other people feel? because that's what, they're li that's what they're missing. And they're actually say things in order to provoke a reaction to see what it is. Um, I think some of this is already in the game. Now, I mean, 
we went very quickly through just, just to get a feeling of it. If you play it, I would say that that is the part of feedback that is embedded in the gameplay already. And um, it, it has to be read out of the answers that you get from, from the person you're talking to, for example. So, or, or do you mean really facial expressions or in general? Well, I mean, like, instead of having a score, have it so... This, this is how this person, you're making them feel. So um, that, so because if they can't read the expression... Yeah, the body does a bit of that, but also the, the, the counterpart that you have there is reacting, I don't know, in a, in a nicer way on, or more roughly or more like... They, w they wouldn't notice that. They wouldn't notice that, okay. No. Well, the body is more explicit, of course. That's implicit if you want. The body is more explicit. We could add smileys or something. If, if you're thinking of something symbolic, it can yeah. be added like in form of smileys, for example, which is, I don't know if it's a metaphor that is useful in this sector. As I said, I'm, I'm not like, working. You know, like a steady 50 is a, a hand like that. The person feels good, the thumb goes ah, up. That, that, yeah, that we have in some other games. We have the thumb system. Right. Nice, not yeah. nice. Okay. This we have already... Um, where do we have it in modes in, in the soft skills game, for example? So, I mean, Antonio can show you a game where, where you have this um, scoring system as well. And that also can be viewed or you can make it disappear. Yeah. yeah. So actually we have yeah, uh, three levels. So the scoring in, in any form, the, the, the body and the answers from your counterpart, because that's also feedback. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Lucia. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Cheers. Thank you.